Okay, now do you still think you're a good person? This is giving you a contrast. So you've got to stand it. You know when police pick up a guy they think's driving, do you know what they do with him? They take him out of the car, draw a straight line and say walk it. Now if he can't walk the straight line, he's going to jail. So I'm giving you a straight line to measure yourself by. Have you ever taken something that belongs to somebody else, even if it's small? This is the eighth commandment. What do you call someone who steals things? So what are you? No, you're not. You're a lying thief. <laughs> now, do you still think you're a good person? Yes. Okay. I think, getting a little wobbly, have you ever used God's name in vain? No. OMG? Yes. Oh, this is your friends. You don't need enemies, Chrissy. Your friends are telling you the truth. Yes. So you certainly are a compulsive liar. You were telling the truth when you told me you are a liar. Would you ever use your mother's name as a cuss word? You would? So you've just violated. You have to, is that you the mother? Yeah. I'm so sorry, Mum. So you just violated the fifth commandment, honor your father and mother. Now, when you use God's name as a cuss word, you are committing the sin of blasphemy, using his name to express disgust when he gave you life. Do you believe in God's existence? Do you believe he gave you life? He gave you children? And yet you used his name as a cuss word. It's very serious. Blasphemy, punishment by death in the Old Testament. You still think you're a good person? Yes. Okay, so you think a lying thief and a blasphemer is a good person? Okay, now I'm going to give you the one that nailed me to the wall many years ago. Jesus said, whoever looks with lust has committed adultery in the heart. Have you ever looked with lust? You can't lie because your friends are smiling. Yeah, so before you're married. Have you had sex before you're married? Jesus, you're getting really personal. You're just blaspheming the name of Jesus then. So, it's real personal, but thanks for your, thanks for your honesty with me. But see, I'm not judging you. You've just told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, a fornicator, and an adulterer. And you have to face God on judgment. And here's the big question, and here's the reason we're talking like this. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments, we looked at five, would it be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? What? Yeah, that makes it more guilty. It makes you more I guilty. Ask for him to forgive you right now. But that won't help you. I'll tell you why. You stand in front of the judge, and if you're guilty of a very serious crime, and say, Judge, I did rob the bank, and I did shoot the guard, but please forgive me. He's going to say, Yeah, so what? You're going to jail. So asking for forgiveness won't save you from God. You need something else. Do you know what you need? You don't need a fly in your eye. Sorry about that. You know what you need? <laughs> What? You need God's mercy to save you from hell. And the Bible says he's rich in mercy to all that call upon him. Now, Chrissy, what did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Do you know? Yeah. Jesus died on the cross for the sin of the world. Now, most people know that, but they don't know this. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. 
I took you through the law so you could see you're a criminal in God's eyes. Stay with me, Chrissy. I'll be finished in a minute. This is so important. This is how you can find everlasting life. So don't, 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 don't be distracted. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross 2,000 years ago. If you're in court, Chrissy, and someone pays the fine, even though you're guilty and judged, and let you go. You can say, look, there's serious, serious crimes, but someone's paid the fine, you're free to go. Even though you're guilty, you can walk. And God can dismiss your case, forgive your sins, take the death sentence off you, because Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood. We can leave on Judgment Day because of what Jesus did on the cross. And then he rose from the dead and defeated death. And all you have to do to find everlasting life is repent of your sins. That is acknowledge you're a sinner. Stop saying I'm a good person because none of us are good. Not in God's eyes. We're good in man's eyes, but not God's. The dictionary gives over 40 different definitions of the word good. Number one is moral excellence. That's good in God's book. And that's the stand he's going to judge with on Judgment Day. Here we go, I'm finishing. If you repent and just trust in Jesus, God will forgive your sins in an instant. Transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. You can't save yourself. It's not going to work. Just trust Jesus. God will forgive your sins and grant you everlasting life. How many kids do you have? Yeah. Are you leaving them in death? Or are you going to lead them into everlasting life? Everlasting life. Okay, so listen to what I'm saying. Get right with God yourself. And then read the scriptures daily with your children. And show them the way of everlasting life. Does this make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. You're going to think seriously about this today? Yeah. You've been very patient. Yeah. Thank you very much. How many members of your family have you got here today? Yeah. How many? Fifteen? Thirteen. Well, that's too many for me. I was going to give you some in and out cards, but I'll give you two. And you have to break it up and feed the 5,000 for the in and out <laughs> Anybody an atheist? No, not you, ma'am. Yeah, I just have a question. I've been wondering. Yeah, tell me. Do you want to get up there and ask? It doesn't matter. It would be nice if you would. I really kind of understand Abraham's wisdom. Yeah. About that? Yeah, you're talking about uh, Luke 17, 16, 17, where the rich man died, went to Abraham's bosom. Yeah. Well, I know, but I, my understanding was is that people went there before the gates of heaven were opened. Oh, and they, no, it's not purgatory. Right. It's a holding cell. So, so, so do you know anything about it? Because I think it's yeah, it's, I think it's a holding cell. I don't. I really don't know. It's not my. Uh, it's not my expertise. Theology. Scotty, do you know anything about Abraham's bosom? After death. Yeah. That much we know. But one thing I do know is that Abraham said, or oh, sorry, the rich man said to Abraham, "Go to my brothers and warn them about this place." He waited until he was in hell before he became concerned for his loved ones, where they were going to spend eternity. We should be concerned today. Are you a Christian? Okay. Yeah. Anybody here not a Christian would like to talk to you? Is that a camera? Yeah. You're kidding. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> it's a pocket camera. Oh, don't sneeze. You could lose it. <laughs> Where'd you get it? Uh, Best Buy. Really? How much? Uh, $300. Really? So it's good quality? Is that 4K Os even. Is that the Osmo? Osmo. Mini. Oh, the Osmo? Pocket Mini. Yes, sir. Are you a Christian? Yes, I am. Can I take a little video of you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. You're in the shade. Oh, it's all right here. Look at that. Come up closer. You have to get closer. Look at that little camera. And it's, it's got a gimbal with it, so it, everything is always steady. Oh, connect your iPhone too? Right? Yeah, you can connect your iPhone if you want to see uh, a bigger uh, screen. And it's three hundred dollars at Best Buy. Three hundred bucks at Best Buy, yeah. Four K. Four K. And you can, yeah, you can toggle ten eighty p other, other options too if you don't want to record in four K. So, oh, that's pretty great. cool. God bless you, brother. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>